this is a guy that knows about action. I don't mean in real life. Well, both. You know yeah, action. Real action. Dennis knows his action. <laughs> I was saying earlier, your resume is a little too long for me. I'm, I'm not even going to attempt to go through all of your resume. Uh, just go to, you know, dennishaysbert.tv. Okay. And go to my website. <laughs> I've been there. Not only can you see my resume, but you can watch every movie I've ever done. I, wow. Any movie? The movie, I've told you this before. That's been released. Yeah. I've told you this before. Love Field. Oh, was, you. in my opinion, your greatest work, should have been nominated. Like, I read something about, you know, your greatest work was, like, when you played president or something like that. These people. No, no, that was the movie I went, oh, this dude is an actor. Yeah, I mean, toe-to-toe with the great Michelle Pfeiffer mm-hmm. and an amazing script, gr- yeah. incredible acting, and I would recommend everybody go. Now, if they go, go see that now, we're going to get about 29 cents in the mail. What, what <laughs> I, it doesn't matter as long as they see it, you know. But aren't you proud of that work? I mean, that well, one I'm proud is of the, everything I've done. Everything? Everything. Because wow. everything I've done has brought me to this point. Interesting. I don't know if the, is the word could the word pride be used though, or just it's a learning experience. It's a it's learning a, experience, you yeah. know, and it's um, you're proud that it was a learning experience, and that's your perspective. Well, you know what? Hey, I'm proud. Like I said, I'm I'm proud of everything I've done. You know, someone saw fit to hire me. Okay. And uh, so you weren't in any <laughs> flops where you felt like you even didn't do such a great job. Sure. Right, I want to hear him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Comedy is about you, failure. It, it's, uh, I yeah. fail for people's pleasure. Yeah, you fail, and you you and what, and what happens is you fail up. Sometimes, yeah. If you if you don't take it, you know, to heart or take it too seriously, yeah, you do. Oh, I agree with that. I mean, I laugh at you. Do what I, you do. I, I did soft porn. I didn't know that it was soft porn at the time, but it was. <laughs> not to find soft porn, you never got it up. <laughs> 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 Oh, I got it up. The opposite. The opposite. I I said to her, I said uh, to the woman I was about to do a love scene with her. I said, I was like, I was brand new. I wanted some tape. Mm-hmm. I wanted tape. I didn't have any tape at the time. So I took this thing called Tomcat Angels. You've got to look it up. It's about an all-female group of fighter pilots at the Iraq War, and my lover gets shot down. I'm um, uh, T.J. Nash, and we have this love scene. Well, and I told her, I said, I said, I'm <laughs> I'm gonna. I said I'm gonna put my penis to the side, and uh, and and you, we're gonna do. You know, you're gonna ride me or whatever. And I come back the next day, and the director was fired. I said, "What's going on?" They said, "You can see your pecker it kept popping up the whole time over her thighs." <laughs> so, Boy, this deteriorated really quick. <laughs> it, it didn't come from any way. Anyway, well, let's get back to your career. No soft porn. <laughs> no soft porn. <laughs> Thank God. You were the one that told me I was soft. I had to tell the story. So, uh, you know, there's so many things that you do mm-hmm. that you can be proud of. But I, I, your clothing line, you have a really cool clothing line. I mean, how does that, what was the inspiration for that? Just Did, did you feel that people it's, needed these clothes? or did, No, or? you know what? I, I did this for me. Yeah. And uh, I was, well, actually, I was, just, I was losing my identity. Um. For the for the longest time, I was a spokesperson for Allstate. Right, and uh, and I would forever be called the Allstate guy wherever I wherever I went. And you know, people Allstate, walking up to you oh, saying, it's "Allstate guy, it's Allstate guy." I won't say the words. What word? The opposite of legs. Are you in? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. The is, one, it, uh, is it like illegal if I say it? <laughs> you know what? I'm not really. My daughter sure imitates it. it. Yeah. You've, you've heard her do right. that. Right. I said, are you in good hands? Yeah, okay. there, there you go. Say. Okay. So, yeah, a lot of people know you from that. Yeah. Yeah. And it was great, Yeah, you know, because I did it for you know, 19 years. Wow. And Same. made really good money, by the way. I mean, that's yeah. that's a big benefit because we all know what commercials pay, a commercial like that. Right. But does that – did that take you – I mean, I would think that maybe – and I'm, you're probably – I'm probably wrong about this – that this is not my art. Like, Love Field is your art. Well, Do it's a different. It? It's a different kind of art. Yeah. But yeah, being a spokesperson is a, is an art. It wow. is, and um, and you pretty much have to, uh, you know, when you're out and about, you know, you pretty much have to remember, you know, that you, you know, I mean, I couldn't get, I couldn't go out and get anybody else's insurance, for instance. 
I mean, you've seen people that were, you know, Pepsi spoke people, and then you, they caught them drinking a Coke. <laughs> you know? I would see all that stuff, and I would say, okay, Dennis, you know, when you go outside, you know, you just you have to. Do they give you, you lifetime insurance, though? Is, oh, no. That's that's not part of the deal? No. Oh, I'd be working them on that. I do that no, all the time. No, I had to pay for my own insurance. No. Yep. Okay. Wow. That's interesting. That's some, a tidbit that no one ever knew until this man came on our podcast. <laughs> Except for people that ask me outside. We're going to go back to the career, but I, I thought of something when I was earlier today. Mm -hmm. Something that I might have mentioned to you before, but nobody was there for this, but I'll mention it now. And it takes me to the topic of today's generation of what we teach them. And I want to tell you something. It's a compliment. Something that you did years ago that I think is a lost art. And it literally affected my relationship with you to this day is I think that's a guy with integrity. You know what it was? You have no idea. No. You came to my house party. You didn't know me. You knew my girlfriend at the time because it was just the 10 of us. Mm -hmm. And you were on that show, Just the 10 of Us. A lot of people don't know that. No. Go to my website. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, you can see every episode. Uh, really? Yeah. I wonder if you were in the one I wrote. I wrote one mm -hmm. about poetry. I don't know if you were in that one. I'll have to take a look. So you came to the house, mm -hmm. and you gave us this really cool print. It was this really cool print. It was really detailed, and, and it was framed. It was a housewarming gift, right? Mm -hmm. So from that point forward, I have respect for you, and that's what I want to bring up today is they don't do that anymore. They give gift cards. There's no way... Like, our relationship might be different today if you had to be a gift card. I would never even remember. Yeah. But you took the time to go, here's something really cool. And it was something, she got it in the breakup. <laughs> but so I don't know if she still has it. But you brought that. And don't, what do you think about this generation? Are they doing that? Do, do they, is there anything that sticks? Is it, we're just, it's such a temporary society we're in now. Well, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a learned, you know, uh, action. You know, you. Did you teach your kids that? Yeah. I, I taught them, uh, whenever you go to someone's house, you never come empty-handed. Oh, you did that? Yeah. Well, and um, very rare. Even now. though, the, you know, you say, hey, you know, you guys need anything? He says, no, 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 just bring yourself. Bring your appetite. Bring this. Bring that. Yeah. I said, mm. I always bring something. I always bring Even if they say don't bring yeah, something. I always bring a bottle of wine or, or something. Oh, okay. I'll be inviting you over more often. Yeah. You came over to my house and... Not only did you not bring anything, I had to get you a shirt. <laughs> hey, we came right from a fishing trip. Let, let's let's get this straight. Let's get this clear. Because this man is going to make me a liar right in the, right in the middle of my you know, I'm my just statement. kidding. You probably did bring something. I was kidding. No. Well, but my kids love you, by the way. My kids, it, it's amazing. It says also it's a testament to your character. Kids pick up things from character. And they, they, they have this, my, I have a load of friends, they, but they're very particular about who they actually like. Like mm -hmm. the fairies. They like my friends, the fairies. And I was like, how in the world did you pick them of liking them? It's an older couple. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, and and with, with you. They, they, and my daughter's like telling jokes with you. I mean, they just. Energy. It's an energy thing. It's an energy thing. Yeah. yeah. And what can you say to people about improving one's energy? How does that happen? Just by being authentic. And how does that happen? What's the process to authenticity? I don't know what the process is. It's just, you know, just being real. And a lot of people don't know how to be real. I know. You know, and, and you know, let's, let's put it this way. I had my, when my daughter was, so oh gosh, how old was she? She wasn't walking yet. But I, I, I think that uh, the younger the babies are, kids are, the more they see. The more they see into, uh, I w if you will, different dimensions or whatever, they it's see auras. They're, they're much more, in, they're yeah. much more intuitive. Oh, yeah, and they, and I, I really do think they see auras, and um, and they know what's dark and they know what's you know what's light. Mm. I had this. Um, uh, I was working on this show, um, and he had this um, makeup artist. This was years and years. Like I said, years ago, when she was a little baby, and. Um, she was not a nice person. We had run-ins and we had, you know. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. I mean, just. They're usually the most friendly on. Generally. Yeah, right? Because they're talking yeah, to people. It's all a handful, like handful of times um, yeah. I've, I've run into that. And, uh, and, that and an let attitude? me emphasize once, you know, once for all, that I have never had a bad crew. Mm -hmm. I've never worked with a bad crew. Wow. I may have worked with individuals that mm -hmm. were not 
right. you know, so good. But I'm, I'm digressing. I get away from my point. My point is, I, uh, there's no way I could have communicated this to my daughter. And my wife and my, uh, my son and my daughter came to visit me on this shoot. And I brought her into the makeup trailer. And this woman, you know, feigning sweetness and light and everything else, tried to come near her. And she just turned and went, uh. Wow. I she said, could pick up that this is not authentic. Yeah. And I said, I just, yes, please step about five paces back, please. You said that to her? Yeah, to, to the, the makeup? Oh, yeah. I said, you know, please get away from my child. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I know I, well, you know, I mean, I knew it was, it was, you know, can you swear here? It was, yeah. uh, it was bullshit. Yeah. So, I mean, why, why are you faking like you, mm. you like me now? And, mm. and you know, because I have this beautiful little girl in my arms. Well, you're, you're in the wrong town, my friend. I hate to tell you. <laughs> it's it is, is what it is. It is not authentic. A lot of times it's not authentic. It's why, you know, I appreciate our friendship. It's not true, though. And there's I had, there's I had, a lot of authentic. Irby people. was here. You know, yeah. he's, a, he's a mutual friend. You actually introduced us. He was a guest on here. There is an authentic. You'll find them. Yeah. But in general, obviously, it's called Tinseltown for a reason. It's transactional relationships. Haven't you found that to be the case? Transactional relationships. If I, if I need you, then you're in my life, especially like agents. A lot of agents are that you way. You know, it's very interesting. I saw something today, and I was uh, you know, scrolling through, as, as we are all apt to do. Mm -hmm. And I, I came upon something that says, look, you can never find the right person. You have to become the person you want to be in order to bring in the people that's the, theme, that you need. that's the theme of my life. And that's what's wrong with my dating life. Apparently, I'm not the guy I want to be. <laughs> I'm, bringing them yeah. in, I'm bringing in some. Well, you're looking for Mrs. It rather than being the it being that it. brings her it, in. Exactly. You know, and we're, and we're all going through that. It's all about trust. It's it's trusting that yeah. is, is just keep on going, keep on going, and trust that it will evolve. I'm not going to make it happen. I'm not going to force it into happening. It's right. allowing it to happen. It's turning over the results over to some higher source or whatever it is, to destiny. Whatever. But that's what I – I keep on doing that. But in the meantime, I want to get laid. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and see, and there is lies see the how, trap. But see how know? authentic I was there. <laughs> it's yeah. a, we, all have, we all have a dark side. People act like you don't. Well, well, everybody's got is, a little when, dark side. That's what I have, have fun to do with. Is in understand comedy. that if you're looking for that, looking for, you know, just getting laid. Yeah, you're going to find a person that just wants to get laid. Oh, I haven't had that happen yet. <laughs> where, where do you find it? Well, well uh, I guess like Craigslist. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I'm just saying, you know, it's just the energy, man. You are, you, the know, energy. you get back what you put out. Right, right. I actually met with someone last night with my ex. And this is what it was all about. <laughs> no, I meet with someone with my ex. Okay. No, really. I no, mean, I, so I we, believe so, you. So we can have a higher vibrational relationship. We're raising two children. You've met them both. Mm -hmm. And they are amazing kids. They and I think kids. that has to do with, I go at this and I'm going, I'm not just going to accept that we're like enemies. I'm not going to accept that we're, you know, in such disagreement or arguing, whatever. I'm not going to accept that. I'm going to keep being a good person. Right. Despite anything that's coming at me, that's is pretty disturbing sometimes, but I have to just keep rising up, rising up, rising up, and then vibrationally, something will come into my life. But in the meantime, my life is better with her, even though we're not together, you know, in separate homes. The life is better if, and it's only up to me. It's not up to her. That's the other thing. Just let let that go. Do you ever think about the reason she came into your life is to give you the kids that you have? Yes, I have thought about that. And okay. I also thought about how these kids are a reflection of the moment. They are a reflection of lessons learned where they get to go, okay, you're off right now. Mm -hmm. they, they don't say it directly, but they say it. They are saying it where you got some stuff to work on right now because my face will tell you that I'm really bothered by this, what you're doing, Dad. And it's only up to me. It's not up to me to change my ex. It's up to me to, t oh, okay, stop, pause, allow, and go, okay, you need to listen to what they're telling you. Not even in words. Mm -hmm. They'll just, they will let you know. And these two are, in particular, didn't happen with my other two kids as much. These two, it's like less and less and less and all the time. They're going to let you know where you are. And not through any, 
you know, like yelling or anything. I talked to my daughter yesterday. I said, you've never yelled. My daughter's never, and my son, they've never, ever once yelled, yeah, which is crazy. Yeah, they're, they're special kids. Yeah, I mean, it's just, Your I. Your son is otherworldly. Yeah, you notice that? Yeah, he, he's, he's uh, an old soul. He's been here before. I can't believe you knew that. I mean. Oh, I see it. It's unbelievable. I, I, I always say he's like 75 years old. He's way more mature than I am. I mean, he laughs at me. <laughs> Not with me, he laughs at me. Like, are you, it rolls the eyes. I mean, here he goes. I mean, I'm immature. I'm, I, I have got a lot of work to do. He doesn't. It's like he's already there. Well, don't believe that. He, he's going to have to, well, you know, he's uh, going to have to deal with some stuff. Of course. And he is dealing with stuff. Yeah. He's dealing with stuff with me and his mom all right. the time. I mean, and so that's his lot in life. And I always want to protect that from happening, too. Mm-hmm. I don't want them to be any more disturbed of that. But people say, look, it's, this is what they're, if I made it through, why can't they? Speaking of making it through, I never knew your dad was a sheriff. Yeah. Really? Yeah, he's deputy sheriff. I mean, he was a sheriff for uh, the United Airlines hub in San Francisco, which was pretty big. So, you know, he was a, you know he was a sheriff there. A sheriff for the for United for United Airlines. So he worked at the airport. Yeah, was well, you know San Francisco. He was Francisco. a sheriff of the airport. Of of just the United part. Yes, but United Airlines that was their hub, one of their hubs. <laughs> okay. So it was huge. So you weren't in fear that he was in danger every day. Uh, no. No, no, I'm not not. He not a, almost he almost he was almost the first police officer in my my hometown, black police officer. But that you, was for another friend of um, another friend of mine had a dad who was uh, the first black policeman in San Mateo. Your dad was almost that. Yeah, he was gonna. You know, he was going to. But he was the deputy sheriff. But he's a deputy sheriff. He didn't want. He didn't be. He didn't become a policeman. And and was he an authoritarian? Like did, did he, oh, yeah. he pull out the belt and all that kind of stuff? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like well, <as> matter <laughs> of fact, of course. Of yeah, course yeah. yeah. I would imagine somebody who comes from a space of um, you know dominance. You have to be dominant to be in that. Well, business. the thing is, this is what I've learned over the years. My father was the way he was um, to protect us. Uh huh. From the outside world, because if we did not, you know, succumb or get in uh, line, get in line yeah. at home, yeah. we were out of line outside. Oh. And outside is not a beating that you're going to get, which you would get killed. And th- are you saying this because you're black? Yes. Okay. So not obvious. <laughs> <laughs> it's not obvious. That's the reason you're saying it because uh, that that, well, was, that think, would apply to it, other I parents, it, wouldn't it, it? I think it applies to other parents, but it acutely applies to. Um, I'm children. pissed. I'm pissed. I got beat now. There's, there was no purpose in it. Oh. I was fine out there in the world. <laughs> so, what, what are you beating me for? No, 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 I. But yeah, I mean that, that's interesting. He was protecting you. I, that's so the way why I see would, it. Why now. would other like white parents beat their kids? Then I, I don't know. Really, I don't know what it is to be white. Mm-hmm. But all I know is that you know I, I think. But the problem is this is the issue. I think as many white kids are, not as many, but white kids are, are beaten and killed out in the out in the real world by cops. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. You have to understand where cops come from. Yeah. You know the whole attitude. Now most of the cops nowadays, I have a nephew who's a cop. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he knows the history of policing. Policing came about after the release of the slaves. Interesting. I okay. did not know that. And those were the, you know, it's like, um, you know, the, uh, you know, the slave patrols that at, at time, you know, once that we was were the free- primary purpose of police oh, was yeah. slave patrol. To, yeah, keep the keep yeah, and and keep the people newly freed slaves in line. I'm going to end the podcast right here. That's enough. <laughs> That's humble. I love history. I I'm pretty damn <laughs> well versed yeah. in history. Never knew this before. Yeah, that is. Fascinating.